Uh, good evening once again. For a uh, few, it might be good morning and uh, good afternoon. I'm your host, uh, Piali, and I welcome you all to this uh, webinar. Today, we have Mr. Arne Allender with uh, me. Arne is a certified Scrum trainer and uh, also a management 3.0 facilitator. He has been training a lot of people in uh, multiple countries of Asia and uh, Europe. Today's topic is a full-time dedicated Scrum Master, Benefits and uh, Challenges, uh, where Arne will tell us the benefits of having a full-time and dedicated Scrum Master and the challenges uh, getting there. Regarding the format of the session, uh, it's a one-hour session. You can uh, type your queries on the chat box. Towards the end of the session, Arne will address those queries. So we are good to go. And I would request Arne to take the show forward. Over to you, Arne. OK, thank you very much, uh, Piali. And uh, welcome to this webinar to all of you attendees. Um, you have heard about uh, the title for the webinar. and. Uh, uh, when uh, registering, uh, you were asked to uh, put down some notes about your ideas of why it would be beneficial to have a full-time dedicated Scrum Master and possible challenges for going there. So um, we'll uh, um, make use of those uh, ideas as we go along. Um, what I would like you to do right now is to, um, as a participant, think for a couple of seconds about what are the main responsibilities of the Scrum Master? And write it down for yourself. And uh, when, uh, when uh, you take a look at your notes from this webinar afterwards, um, you, can, you can see what you wrote in the beginning, what is most important to you. And you may use that to further uh, deal with uh, getting the benefits of uh, a full-time dedicated Scrum Master. So I'm going to give you 10 seconds to write down uh, what you believe are the main responsibilities of a Scrum Master for your own sake. So uh, 10 seconds from now. Um, so that's the 10 seconds. Uh, what we will do also during this webinar is uh, engaging you uh, participants by, um, by um, asking you questions so that you can enter your questions in a poll. And then we, we have a, a couple of questions that we will ask along the, the webinar. And now um, I'm going to ask Piali to uh, to show you the first question that we have so that you get an opportunity to, to answer that question. So, so we get a, a feeling about what, how is the land lying uh, where, with regards to uh, are organizations having a full-time Scrum Master or not? So uh, Piali, please, uh, please uh, um, show the first uh, question for the, the poll, uh, and then we'll ask participants to give their answer. Uh, yes, sure. I'm launching the first poll. Do you have a full-time Scrum Master? So I have launched the poll. And we'll give, uh, it's not a tough question, I believe. So uh, we'll just want to get, get the feeling of how, what people are experiencing. So uh, please enter your answer, yes or no. Do you have a full-time Scrum Master? Uh, in some organizations, of course, you could have one full-time Scrum Master and a lot of non-full-time Scrum Masters. But uh, if you have one, then the answer is yes. If you don't have any full-time Scrum Masters, then the answer is no. So um, how are we doing on the percentage of answers right now? Okay, so I think uh, we'll, uh, we'll check uh, what we have uh, in the poll right now. So Piali, please uh, close the poll and we'll see what we have. Sure, I'm closing and uh, sharing the result. Can you see the result, uh, Arne? Yes, I can see. So uh, I see that there are 44% saying yes and 56% uh, saying no. So um, a majority, but not a big majority, is saying no. And, and um, that, that's a good, uh, good to understand. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to uh, start the presentation. We'll first talk a little about uh, the basic Scrum Master responsibilities and a couple of views on that. And then we'll talk about the, the benefits, the possible benefits of having a full-time uh, Scrum Master. And uh, of course, we'll address the different challenges as well. Uh, towards the end, um, we will talk about uh, what I call a forgotten responsibility of a Scrum Master. And we'll see if you guys uh, participating agree with me on that. And as Piali said uh, in the beginning, we'll uh, finish off with a question and answer uh, part uh, towards the end. So um, let's see if I can get my presentation started. Yes, I can. So um, basic Scrum Master responsibilities. Well, the, the first answer to that question, what are the basic Scrum Master responsibilities? Um, you probably find in the Scrum Guide. Um, and the Scrum Guide is put together by um, Jeff Sutherland and Ken Schwaber, the creators of Scrum. The last revision, the last update is from November 2017. And on this slide, you also see the URL for the Scrum Guide. So it's uh, www.scrumguides.org, O-R-G. There you will find the uh, the possibilities to download PDFs in different uh, languages, and uh, also there is an online uh, version. And what it says in the Scrum Guide is that the Scrum Master is responsible for promoting and supporting Scrum as defined in the Scrum Guide. And there you get the answer, a very condensed uh, description of Scrum, and the Scrum Master is responsible for promoting and supporting. Um, and Scrum Masters do this, and this is also from the Scrum Guide. They do this by helping everyone understand Scrum theory, practices, rules, and values. And by everyone, we mean not only the members of the development team, not only the product owner, not only the managers, but everyone in connection, all stakeholders, customers, clients, and the internal stakeholders within our company. They need to understand Scrum theory, practices, rules, and values. And this is the job of the Scrum Master to help them do that. So the Scrum Master should be a servant leader for the Scrum team. The Scrum team is the development team and the Scrum Master and the product owner. And also helps those outside the Scrum team to understand which of their interactions with the Scrum team are helpful and which are not helpful. This may be one of the important things to remember that for those outside the Scrum team, they of course want to interact with the Scrum team, they want to interact with the product owner, they want to interact with the development team. And some of those interactions are really helpful and others are not. So let's try to make sure that all interactions are helpful and let's try to get rid of those that are not. So this is also the job of a Scrum Master. And then everyone change, it says. A Scrum Master should help everyone change these interactions so that we maximize the value created by the Scrum team. Um, and then in the Scrum Guide, it also divides the, the responsibilities of the Scrum Master into three areas. Service to the product owner, which means as the Scrum Master, I have the responsibility to be of service to the product owner when it comes to help the product owner understand Scrum, help the product owner understand the role of the product owner, help the product owner to use different techniques to create, for example, a product vision, a product backlog, and different techniques for collaboration with uh, the development team. And then it says that um, the Scrum Master should be of service to the development team. And that can be a number of different things. It could be uh, team dynamics uh, to facilitate communication with the, within the development team, to facilitate collaboration between the development team members, and also to facilitate collaboration with the product owner. And then lastly, in the Scrum Guide, it says service to the organization. Uh, and this also, uh, in addition to helping everyone understand Scrum theory, uh, helps everyone 
change and helps those outside of the Scrum team. That's the organization. So let's not forget about that. So this is what it says in the Scrum Guide. Um, when I do um, training classes for uh, Scrum certifications, especially when um, I do certified Scrum Master uh, classes, um, I always mention what is presented on the next slide, uh, a Scrum Master's checklist. This is a checklist put together by Michael James, a certified Scrum trainer in the United States. And um, Michael James, he, uh, he claims that a Scrum Master should be full-time allocated because then you have time to do all of the things that you need to do as a Scrum Master. And he has divided the Scrum Master responsibilities into four areas. Um, and he explains the four areas by asking questions. So the first one is, how is my product owner doing? Service to the product owner is how it's put in the Scrum Guide. Second question is, how is my development team doing? Service to the development team is how it's put in the Scrum Guide. And the third question, you don't really see it in, uh, in the Scrum Guide, but it says, how are our engineering practices doing? So uh, Scrum gives us values, Scrum gives us some principles, and then it's up to us to find the practices that we benefit from using to actually delivering high quality um, products. So what are those engineering practices that we can use? Are we constantly finding new ones? Are the development team members and learning new stuff and so on and so on and so on. And then the fourth area, how is the organization doing? So service to the organization. You see some parallels here. Um, on the website scrummasterchecklist.org, you can find all of the detailed questions about this. So this was the second uh, reference when it comes to um, um, the responsibilities of a Scrum Master. Uh, I'm going to mention one more. And um, this is called 42 Tasks for a Scrum Master's Job. It's uh, from the company Agile Trail, and um, it's, um, it's, um, it's Bernd Schiffer who is responsible for this. And um, of course, if you go to the website, you will see all of the 42 tasks. And they are divided into seven areas. Meetings, so a Scrum Master should facilitate meetings when necessary. Team dynamics, a Scrum Master should work with the development team to make sure that they are really working together, that they are learning to act as a team and not necessarily only as individuals. Uh, learning, both from individual, team, and organizational point of view. Then um, there is an area called product, and let's not forget, that's the result. Are we actually producing products that are wanted and useful? And let's keep the big picture. That's the job of the Scrum Master as well. And then the necessary change to become better. That's the job of the Scrum Master to do. Then um, on Agile Trail, uh, the list of 42 tasks for a Scrum Master's job also contains mirror. As the Scrum Master, you should act as a mirror to um, individuals, to teams, to the organization, so that their actions are actually reflected, so that you help people um, to uh, think about what are we actually doing and how is that helping us or not helping us. So act as a mirror is a very good thing as a, as a Scrum Master. So um, the Scrum Guide, a Scrum Master's Checklist, and the 42 tasks for a Scrum Master's job. I find those references really, really good for Scrum Masters to keep in mind, especially when we talk about finding arguments for why is it that a Scrum Master should be a full-time assignment. Um, so um, it's, um, it's time for um, a second poll, and um, I'm going to I'm going to ask Piali to bring up the, the second question. And uh, this is a little about what you know of 
where your Scrum Master is focusing in your organization. So uh, here it should be possible to give multiple answers. There are five alternatives. And uh, so Piali, please uh, bring up the, the second question for Paul. Uh, yes, I'm just launching the second question. Uh, yes, it's open now. Great. I can see it here. And uh, for you as participants, please think about um, what of the thing are your Scrum Master focusing on? Uh, and sometimes, of course, it needs to be an average. And uh, sometimes uh, everything, sometimes not everything. We'll see what is the most common things that Scrum Masters are focusing on. We'll give you a couple of more seconds to enter your uh, answers. And uh, then we'll take a look at the results. So I think uh, it's time now to uh, close the poll, please. Okay, I'm closing it. So I have closed the poll and uh, here is the result. Yes. So now I need to see, this is a very small picture on my uh, screen. So are you able to, to see it better? I see that alternative C, uh, facilitating Scrum events is the biggest one, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, C, 85% facilitating Scrum events. And then we yes, have then the, uh, 73%. So the two top ones is facilitating Scrum events, 86%, and coaching the development team, 70, what does it say, two? Um, and we have, um, if I can see it correctly, D, removing organizational impediments. Yeah, D have 53% vote. 53%. And um, what about uh, B and E? I cannot really see that. Something like 44 and 49. 49% E and 44% uh, B. Yes. Okay. So um, we see here that coaching the development team is um, quite uh, common. Facilitating Squam events is also quite common. Uh, that's even the... The majority have, uh, they have 86% there. And then uh, removing organizational co impediments, coaching the organization in its Scrum adoption, and coaching the product goal. There may be benefits from um, Scrum Masters in different organizations to, to remember this, that uh, these are all uh, uh, relevant responsibilities of a Scrum Master. And if you do all of them, you are probably in a very good um, situation. Okay, so let's um, see if we, I can continue uh, with the presentation. Thank you for giving your answers to the poll. And let's see if we can get next here. Yes, now it's time to talk about possible benefits of uh, having a full-time Scrum Master. Um, so, um, when I think about this, there are a couple of things that uh, really comes to mind. And uh, first of all, I think that a possible benefit of having a full-time Scrum Master is focus. Because if I'm allowed to work as a Scrum Master full-time, I can really focus on that role. If I'm not allowed to um, um, work full-time, then I probably have other duties as well, maybe other roles to play. And then, of course, focus will be uh, suffering. And, and if I'm able to focus on being a full-time Scrum Master, then it's possible for me to deal with root causes of our problems. Um, it's uh, quite easy to identify problems. It's quite easy to address them, but to identify the root causes of our problems may not be as easy. So it's really, really beneficial for Scrum Masters to have time to uh, 
dig deeper into our problems and try to really identify the root causes. They are not always the, the most um, obvious. So um, having a full-time Scrum Master allows you to better deal with the root causes of problems. And uh, this is also related to next uh, item on my list. Uh, then we are able to deal with real improvement. That's also a possible benefit of having a full-time Scrum Master because improvement sometimes takes time. And um, in order to improve, we probably need to uh, to change, to put it mildly. Um, if I'm uh, less uh, diplomatic, I would say we really need to change in order to get any improvement. And um, that's the role of a Scrum Master. And the more time I have to work with uh, team members, to work with the development team, to work with product owner, to work with the organization, the better I can facilitate real improvement. And real improvement comes from experimentation. Uh, we may have ideas on how to improve, but we don't really know the results until we have made some experiments. So a Scrum Master needs to be present to help organization, help uh, individuals, help development team to really experiment. And then to uh, inspect the results of the experiments and adapt accordingly so that we work in an agile way. We have a transparency so that we can inspect and adapt and then get real long-term improvement. Working as a full-time Scrum Master allow you also to focus on long-term improvements. There is always a balance between short-term improvements and um, long-term improvement in any situation. And if we have full-time Scrum Masters, the likelihood of us focusing more and actually allowing us to focus on the long-term perspective is um, is higher. So that's um, about real improvement. If we have full-time Scrum Masters, then uh, as servant leaders, we can probably uh, be better at getting the possible benefits of happy team, uh, and also, of course, happy stakeholders. So here are some of my ideas on what are possible benefits of a full-time Scrum Master. And what I would like to do now is to stop for a couple of seconds, and then um, I will um, ask all the participants to uh, to um, to take a look at um, what you believe are possible benefits. Remember that uh, the question that um, you got uh, before about um, what are your ideas about possible benefits. I would like for you to um, to enter those things into the chat box so that we can take a look at that and see if there maybe are um, other uh, possible benefits also from having a full-time Scrum Master. And um, I need some support from you, Piali, because I made a slight uh, uh, mistake when I uh, started this uh, webinar, I decided to not being able to use my cursor. So I cannot open my, the chat. So uh, what I would like to do now is ask all participants to enter your ideas of other possible benefits from having a full-time Scrum Master. And then I would like to ask uh, Piali to uh, to read from the from the chat box and um, and see what uh, what kind of um, ideas people have. So sure. please think for a couple of uh, seconds. Uh, write your ideas down in the chat box. And Piali, as you see people entering their ideas, please read them out loud. Sure, sure. So uh, here uh, people are entering their ideas. First one I can read continuous improvement. Okay, second, I can see uh, remove team impediments and distractions away from the team. Then I can see clarity and visibility is high. Next, we have a process improvement. Uh, 
should I move on to the next one, Arne? Yes, please. Yeah. Next, we have development team can focus on their work. Yes. So um, um, I'm going to address a little of these that we have heard so far. And then I will, when I've done that, I will ask you to read if there are even more. Um, so continuous improvement, yes. Uh, that's um, dealing with the real improvement. And it's also um, that possible benefit is actually about allowing ourselves to improve all the time, not only do one thing and change and then be settled with that. Um, improve team uh, improvement and um, no, not improve, but uh, take away uh, team uh, impediments and distractions. Uh, a lot of times uh, we say that the squad master should shield the team. So this is really uh, related to the fifth thing that you read as well, um, that development team can focus on uh, developing the product. So uh, make sure that the development team has time to do this. And we want it uh, to be like a one-way mirror. Uh, because if the development team needs to address someone in the organization or a stakeholder or a client, that should be necessary because that's, uh, that should be possible because uh, then it's probably necessary for them to do that in order to, uh, to understand what they're supposed to do and get more clarity and visibility. Um, but if other people, if stakeholders and the rest of the organization, internal stakeholders, clients, customers, whoever, if they feel the need of addressing the development team, there is a risk that they are not um, helping. So those are examples of things that we should try to avoid. So uh, shield the development team. If you have a full-time Scrum Master, that's even uh, um, easier to do. Clarity and visibility is high because what a Scrum Master can do is help the development team, help the product owner uh, to, um, to make progress visible, make ongoing work visible, make uh, product backlog visible, and so on and so on. And of course, process improvement. Uh, if um, I work as a full-time uh, Scrum Master, probably I'm more inclined to be able to help the development team team and help the organization and help the product owner to uh, to deal with pr continuous process improvement, not only any type of improvement, but process improvement. So uh, please look for any other um, ideas. Yeah, uh, next uh, we can see part-time Scrum Masters usually only, just a second, only facilitates the Scrum ceremonies. Yes. So um, if I'm a Scrum Master, I'm not able to work full time, then um, what um, we see is that um, the events are, um, are dealt with. Facilitating Scrum events got 86% in the poll. So um, that's usually taken care of. But sometimes that's the only thing taken care of. So um, what about the development team, service to the development team? What about service to the product owner? What about service to the organization? And so on. Um, those are things to, to think about. So uh, allowing uh, the Scrum Master to deal with all the responsibilities of the Scrum Master, uh, that's one of the benefits of uh, having full-time Scrum Masters. So, um, I'm going to stop there. Uh, we have uh, created a list of possible benefits of having a full-time Scrum Master. And of course, uh, the reason why I use possible is that one benefit to me may not be true to everyone. Uh, and um, some benefits to others may not be true to me. So uh, possible benefits. That also, in my mind, give me and others the possibility, the op to try them out and see what happens if we do this. Do we really get focused? Do, are we able to deal with root causes? Are we getting continuous improvement? 
do we get process improvement and can we really shield the team in a good way um, so those are a possible benefits uh, of a, a full-time scrum master um, and of course not every organization has full-time scrum masters so um, i think it's um, it's uh, called for to talk about what are the challenges what is actually stopping us what is making the it's hard for us to make the jump from part-time scrum masters to full-time scrum masters. Sometimes uh, it's about um, convincing people in the organization. So um, before we talk about challenges, I'm going to ask you to do a third poll. So we have a third question to show uh, all the participants and. Um, um, that is about what is stopping you from having full-time dedicated Scrum Masters. So, um, um, Piali, please um, show this um, question to the participants and we'll ask them to give their answer. And then we'll talk about challenges uh, when it comes to having a full-time Scrum Master. Sure. Um, uh, launching the third poll, the question is, what is stopping you from having a full-time dedicated Scrum Master? And here is the poll launched. Um, and in some situations, uh, we really don't know what is stopping us. Uh, some um, organizations, it's um, management saying that, uh, no, we cannot afford having full-time Scrum Masters. We're not allowing it. Uh, and in some um, organizations, uh, it's even the Scrum Master saying that, well, I'm, um, I'm not using full time to be a good Scrum Master. Uh, in some organizations, it's the alternative D. Scrum Master is also a member of the development team. And uh, there may be other reasons as well. And if you have other reasons that you know of in your organization, uh, please, uh, enter that in the chat box and we'll take a look at that uh, um, when we talk about challenges. So uh, what about another 10 seconds and then we'll take a look at the poll results. Uh, yes, 68%, 70% voted. Uh, should I close the poll now or? Yes, please. Okay. Please close uh, it. Here is the result. Okay, so uh, if I can see the small numbers here, it's actually management do not allow it that has received the most uh, answers. Uh, very, very few say, I don't know. And the second one is the Scrum Master is also part of the development team. And uh, that uh, correlates very uh, nicely with my experiences. Um, so if uh, management does not allow, uh, then it can be uh, different things. It could be, uh, for example, the challenge is time. We, we're not allowed to spend full time, uh, but the challenge can also be money. In some organizations, uh, management, they say uh, that, um, okay, we have a team of uh, seven people, seven uh, development team members, and uh, we can simply not afford adding a person number eight being a full-time Scrum Master. And uh, in those organizations, what I try to do is to, uh, to refocus the, the, the question, and I try to ask in the management of that organization, what if you only have seven people and you allowed one of those seven development team members to uh, to uh, be a full-time Scrum Master. How would that affect the productivity of the development team? Then you don't have to spend more money in having uh, eight people. You can still be seven people, but you can experiment in how you focus your things. So, um, time and money and when it comes to management it may be necessary to convince them uh, lack of focus is also a challenge and this relates to uh, 
the Scrum Master is also part of the development team or have other duties. So um, when we did the poll, uh, there was a possibility to answer other reasons. So Piali, please check the chat box and see if we have other reasons uh, uh, entered by, by any participants. Okay, so uh, one we can see client doesn't pay for the full-time Scrum Master. Okay. Okay, so, so client doesn't pay. Uh, and that's, uh, if you ask me, that's, um, that's a classic um, uh, situation. Um, before I learned about Scrum, I worked for consultancy companies. And I worked for um, companies deliver, de developing solutions for clients. And um, in those days, um, it wasn't a matter of discussing a Scrum Master or not a Scrum Master. It was a matter of discussing should we have a project manager or not. And sometimes uh, some companies say, well, the client doesn't pay for having a project manager. Uh, today, I believe many, many, many clients and many organizations, they fully recognize the need of having project managers. So um, I am quite hopeful that uh, it is possible to help organizations understand the needs and benefits of having a, a full-time uh, full Scrum Master. So, um, any other um, reasons, any other um, challenges? Yes, uh, we have a few more. So next I can see management thinks that permanent Scrum Masters who are usually internal employees don't possess the right knowledge as opposed to a consultant or a part-time uh, Scrum Master hired from a fancy consulting firm. Okay, so, so this is um, about um, thinking internal uh, employees, uh, full-time employees, uh, compared to, uh, to consultants. And uh, if you hire a consultant, then maybe you don't feel that you afford to, um, to have a full-time consultant uh, hired. Um, I've been in that situation as a consultant, being hired as a, a Scrum Master. And what I thought was really challenging in that situation, and I think that's true for others in those situations as well, is to um, understand how to help the development team, how to help the product owner get rid of organizational impediments what doors to open, what strings to pull to best help the team in that particular organization. Um, I believe I had enough knowledge in Scrum, uh, but enough knowledge in Scrum you can have. And my idea is that it's really, really good for organizations to have their own Scrum Masters, their own people being Scrum Masters, uh, because they know of the organization. They know of what is... Um, what is challenging, and they don't need to spend time uh, uh, recognizing that. They know it from start. Uh, that's a great benefit, and of course, it's a challenge if uh, management have this opportunity. Okay, so um, I'm going to move along, and uh, we're going to talk about a couple of more things, and that will allow for uh, for questions from uh, participants as well, and. Um, Unfortunately, I have a strict deadline. I, I cannot go on the, um, for a full hour. So um, I need to quit at uh, um, five minutes past 9 p.m. Uh, Indian time, which is uh, in um, about 17, 18 minutes. But um, let's do the last part and then allow for uh, questions from participants. So, um, forgotten responsibility of the Scrum Master. Um, well, to be honest, um, most people, they realize that this is a responsibility of the Scrum Master. But since uh, it's not fully carried out by all Scrum Masters and all uh, organizations, I call it the forgotten responsibility of the Scrum Master. And if you remember when we took a look at uh, the Scrum Guide, uh, where they list the responsibilities of the checklist um, 
from the Scrum Master's Checklist by Michael James and the 42 tasks of a Scrum Master's job. Uh, all of those um, resources, they mentioned the following service to the organization in one way or another. So I call this the forgotten responsibility of a Scrum Master. Um, and uh, the poll we did before about um, Scrum Masters, they um, actually uh, work with facilitating Scrum events. Scrum Masters, they coach the development team. Uh, there is an opportunity for many Scrum Masters to remember this. As a Scrum Master, you should do service to the organization to try to find the organizational impediments stopping us from doing really good product development. And um, what I allowed myself to do was actually just copy uh, what it says uh, here in, uh, in uh, the Scrum Guide. The Scrum Masters serves the organization in several ways, including leading and coaching the organization in its Scrum adoption, uh, planning Scrum implementations within the organization. And here it's important to remember that um, it's not only for the development team. It's not only for the Scrum Master. It's not only for the developer, uh, sorry, the product owner, but it's for the entire uh, organization. So um, other parts of the organization, they will interface uh, the development team. They will interface the product owner. And sometimes you get conflict zones in those interfaces. Sometimes you get friction. And the Squaw Master can work as the oil in the machinery to, to facilitate collaboration. And of course, helping MPs and stakeholders understand and enact Squam and empirical product development. Pre empirical product development is about inspecting and adapting. And therefore you need to have a transparency. So the three legs of empirical product development, uh, transparency, inspect and adapt. And that goes to the product we are creating, inspect that and ab adapt it so that it fits the needs of our customers. But it also goes to the ways we're working. And then of course, um, Costing change that increases the productivity of the Scrum team. That's also part of uh, what the Scrum Master can do as service to the organization. Um, in many organizations, um, as a Scrum Master, I'm not alone. Uh, there are other Scrum Masters. And um, it's really, really good if we can work together and try to see if there are some uh, systematic problems, some systematic things that we can uh, solve. Uh, so that we increase the effectiveness and the application of Scrum in the organization. And uh, when you read the Scrum guide, uh, of course, um, you get the notion that it's about uh, applying Scrum in organizations. When I work with my clients, I believe that it's really, really good for them to be able to answer the question, why on earth do you want to become good at working according to Scrum? Because then we know that if we can get good at Scrum, then maybe we can meet the overarching goal, the, the high level goal, because Scrum in itself may help us, but it helps us to become better at product development. So maybe we can deliver faster, maybe we can deliver higher quality, maybe we can get happier team members. Whatever we believe Scrum can help us to do, we need to know that. So why Scrum? And then use Scrum to, to, uh, to reach those, um, those answers. Okay, so um, now it's time for me to stop talking and uh, allow for questions from participants. And um, I'll try to be brief in answering the questions. Um, so um, I need your support here as well, Piali, by reading uh, possible questions from uh, participants from the chat box. So as a participant, please enter your uh, questions and uh, we'll, uh, we'll start addressing them. Okay, sure. So uh, first question I have here, 
when you say coaching uh, what is the difference compared to agile coach um so um agile coach um is something that you hear a lot about today and um that's not a strict definition um what one organization mean by an agile coach may be quite different from one another um, organization mean uh, when i say coaching i um, i differ that from teaching and i differ that from facilitation so um it's all about helping so when i work as a scrum master i say that the scrum master should teach should teach people in the organization about scrum and a scrum master should facilitate and a scrum master should coach so teaching to me is helping others to obtain more knowledge in this case about scrum of course facilitating to me is about making things easier so if i am a scrum master and i facilitate a meeting it's about making it easier for the participants of the meeting to uh, to uh, to hold the meeting and make sure that the meeting is successful when i say facilitate collaboration it is about making collaboration within the team or between team members of a development team and the product owner to to be easier and then coaching is about helping individuals teams organizations to better apply their knowledge um it's it's like um, sports coaches if you are the coach of a high jumper for example then uh, then um, first it's about teaching then it's about facilitating maybe not necessarily but definitely about coaching telling the the athlete about how i see what he or she is doing and then maybe asking for ideas from the athlete and sometimes also coming up with uh, with suggestion so depending on what an organization mean by an agile coach this can be totally true for an agile coach as well um but it can be somewhat different as well um so that is how i look at coaching as a scrum master and compared to what i know about agile coaching okay so please uh, other questions as well uh moving on to the next question next we have uh, my organization expects me to create sprint tasks in jira board is a scrum master expected to do that so could could you repeat that my organization expects me to and then i didn't hear the rest of that my organization expects me to create sprint tasks in jira board is the scrum master expected to do that okay so uh, expect me to create sprint tasks in jira board um so jira is a tool and um sometimes we need tools uh, sometimes uh, we need to reflect upon what are the tools that we are using right now so um um what are these tools what is the purpose of the tools well a lot of time it's a, the purpose is to visualize things it's to keep uh, us from forgetting about what is in the in the product backlog for example what is in the sprint backlog and also to visualize what is remaining to do what is ongoing and what is already done uh, and that can be done in very different ways so scrum does not require any scrum masters to enter uh, anything into any type of tools um so the tools are usually um, used by product owners or by development team members so let's take a look at what uh, the jira tool can be used for it can be used for um, helping a product owner to uh, keep um, all the items of a product backlog in one place and also ordering them so that that is of help for the development team that is something that is required uh, for a for a product owner to do uh, development teams they are required to to 
to keep track of their progress during a sprint so that they know if they're on track or not. If they're not on track, what to do to get on track, back on track, I should say. Uh, what tools they're using to do this is totally up to the team. Uh, all of what I said so far is strictly Scrum uh, related uh, uh, information. And then, of course, when you have an organization, um, there are constraints, some organizational constraints. Sometimes organizations say that we're not going to allow you to decide what kind of tools we're going to use. So we're going to require you to use this tool. But um, if you ask what Scrum says, Scrum doesn't say that um, a Scrum master should create any sprint tasks in any types of tool, uh, not Jira board, not others as well. Um, if we take a look at sprint tasks, that's the job of the development team members together to decide what are the tasks that we need to perform in order to meet uh, the goal of this sprint. So um, the development team is responsible of uh, identifying tasks. Then the question is who should enter them into the tools that we are using. And sometimes also when Scrum Masters, they think about, should I be a servant leader? Then maybe I should make things a little easier for the development team. So actually some Scrum Masters, they tell development teams that, yes, I can enter sprint tasks into, into the tool, but it's your responsibility to identify them. It's your responsibility to ask the questions. It's your responsibility to make the decision. So don't offload your responsibilities on me. I can help you by being a servant leader, but be careful before you as a Scrum Master take on too much of that. Sorry for a long answer. So the short answer is actually no, uh, according to Scrum. But um, Scrum uh, is not telling organizations everything. You need to listen to your organization and your uh, managers as well. Okay, so uh, moving on to the next question. Next, we have, uh, can Scrum Master do the appraisal of the team members? If yes, how can he or she differentiate between team's performance and uh, individual performance? So, um, whenever you say can, of course, the answer can be yes, but um, that wouldn't be Scrum. So, um, I... I, I receive this uh, question a lot of times, and um, I actually wrote a blog post about this. So I refer to my website at accurate.se uh, and the blog of that. I will, um, I will. What we will do is we will um, we will make sure that the presentation is online, and uh, I'm sure you, um, Piali, can can give the link to the presentation to participants afterwards. And I will include a link to my blog post about this. And um, in essence, the answer is no. Uh, that is not the duty of a Scrum Master. And the main reason for that is that Scrum is about teamwork. And as the question was about, how can you differ between team appraisal and individual appraisal? So if we, if we do individual appraisals, then uh, there is a risk that we don't get the teamwork. Um, and if the team members, the development team members, if they, con if they look upon the Scrum Master as someone who should appraise them, there is a risk that they are not as open and as transparent as we want them to be, to be really successful according to Scrum. Okay, I think we have time for one last question, and then I actually need to uh, to stop this uh, webinar. So, um, please, Piali, do we have more questions? Uh, yes, uh, the last question uh, we are taking here. Uh, is it really necessary for organizations to have an agile coach when they have some really, really good uh, scrum masters? Um, it's, um, yeah. 
if it's necessary for organizations to have an agile co coach if they have really, really good scrum master or scrum masters? Well, I don't really think so. Uh, because um, let's think about it. What is the role of a scrum master? Well, you should give service to the organization. So so uh, organizational change uh, agent is something that we talk about a lot. So I don't really see the need for that. And um, there may be others um, arguing differently from what I say, but um, I believe that organizations may benefit from having both, but I don't really see the need. And I'm not arguing that just because you have good scrum masters, you can never benefit from agile coaches. That may be good to have anyway. Uh, but um, to be honest, scrum master, agile coach, it's similar roles uh, to my experience. And um, it's name of roles. And sometimes there gets an inflation in names of roles. So that's also a reason why in scrum we have uh, development team members, but not particular roles within the development team because we want to uh, get away from that. We want to focus on the development team, not the individual members of the development team. And we start if we start talking too much about uh, the different roles in the organization, then we may take focus from what we're actually there to do. So, um, yeah. Short answer, I don't think it's necessary. It may be beneficial, but be careful where, before you enter too many different roles in your organization. Okay, so um, we've come to an end for this uh, webinar. I will make sure that the presentation is online and I will uh, give the link to Piali so that you can uh, communicate it to, um, to uh, all the participants. Um, unfortunately, this is not going to happen until tomorrow, but tomorrow I will uh, make it available online. Okay, sure, Arne. And uh, thank you so much for this uh, wonderful session. And thank you, friends, for uh, joining us this evening. I will get uh, one SEO from this session and uh, one email you will get in next one hour of time with the steps of claiming that SEO. As Arne said, he will be sharing the link of his presentation. So the presentation and the recording of this session will be available to you in next one or two days of time. If you have any follow-up query and question, please do post it on our discussion forum. The forum link you will get in the follow-up email in the next one hour time. So that's all from my side. Thank you once again. Thanks all for joining. Thanks, Arne, once again. Good night. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 bye.